So today's class is on methods of gaining space. Okay, there are many methods to gain space. The correction of many common malocclusions requires space in order to move the teeth into ideal locations. So there are various methods by which space can be created. So appropriate methods of gaining space in a given malocclusion should be decided only after a proper diagnosis and treatment planning. So the planning space is very important aspect of a good treatment plan. So space is required for various uh, correction of teeth. One, correction of crowding, retraction of propline teeth, leveling of a steep curve of speed, derotation of anterior teeth, correction of unstable molar relation. So methods of gaining space includes proximal stripping, expansion, extraction, molar distalization, uprighting of molars, derotation of posterior teeth, and proclination of anterior teeth. First is coming to the proximal stripping. So proximal stripping is a method by which the proximal surfaces of the teeth are sliced in order to reduce the mesodesal width of the teeth. So the other names of proximal stripping are reproximation, slenderization, disking, and proximal stricing. Slicing. Usually, it is done in the lower anterior segment, but it can be done in the upper anterior and the buccal segments of the upper and lower arches. Now, coming to the indications and contraindications of um, proximal stripping. So, what are the indications of proximal stripping? One is Bolton's excess, then, next is it aids in the retention, maintaining the profile, maintaining class one and molar relation and the canine relation. And in caries analysis, it, if the discrepancy is of the tooth material is between 0 to 2.5 mm. Now, what are the contraindications? Okay. In young patients with uh, large pulp chambers, it is contraindicated. In high caries index, patients with high caries index, poor oral hygiene and enamel hypoplasia. Coming to the advantages of proximal stripping. So, Advantages are that it can be done in borderline to non-extraction cases. A favorable overjet and overbite can be established and a more stable result can be obtained if the contact area is broadened. What are the disadvantages? Now, the roughened proximal surface leads to the accumulation of plaque. Okay? So, this is the disadvantage of proximal stripping. Then there is increased carry susceptibility because of the roughness caused by the proximal stripping. Then coming to sensitivity. Sensitivity is if more amount of enamel is stripped, then it will lead to the um, sensitivity. Then alteration of the tooth morphology. So if a proper, uh, what is the proximal stripping is not done, it will result in altered morphology of the tooth. Then loss of contact will result in food impaction. Now what are the diagnostic aids for proximal stripping? One is arch perimeter analysis. So, if the arch perimeter, the caries analysis, shows a tooth material excess of about 0 to 2.5 mm, then it is an indication for proximal stripping. Next is the Bolton's analysis. The Bolton's analysis, if it reveals the excess of tooth material in both the arches, then we can reduce the tooth material in that arch. Then IOPA. In the IOPA, would give you an idea of the amount of thickness and the rough estimate of the amount of enamel that can be removed from the proximal surface without exposure of the pulp chamber. Okay, coming to the amount of proximal stripping that can be done. So not more than 50% of the enamel thickness should be reduced. Okay, So never remove more than 0.3 mm from a single tooth surface. So according to Sheridan, 0.4 mm reduction per surface of the posterior teeth and 0.25 mm in the anterior teeth, thereby gaining a total space of about 8.9 mm. Now, how can proximal stripping be done? It can be done with the help of metallic abrasive strips, safe sided um, carborundum discs, and long, thin, tapered fissure burn. Okay, coming to the diamond interproximal strips. Okay, they are very thin strips of about 0.8 millimeter and they are made of surgical grade stainless steel which is electrolytically bonded with diamonds. They resist the stretching or breaking and they are autoclavable and reusable. 
strip holders are available that help in holding the strips. So every abrasion strips they are available in either double sided or single sided, and they come in three grades. That is fine, medium, and coarse. So perforated strips are also available, but this uh, will cause clogging of the pores, and hence uh, this is not mainly used. Then thin, fine strips can be passed through the contacts uh, of the teeth regarding the angle, regardless of the angulation. Then strips are also useful for contouring the teeth that have already been reduced using discs or burrs. Now di diamond discs. These comes in different sizes and grids, and that is fine, coarse, and medium. It is usually recommended to use this guard to prevent lip injuries. So high-top diamond discs are available to withstand the low speeds delivered with a high-top motor. And they are available as single and double-sided. Okay, So flexible perforated discs are available that minimize clogging and can be used for uh, contouring and shaping of embrasure areas. Next is a carbide and diamond burrs. So cross-cut uh, carbide burrs and medium or fine grade diamond burrs can be used with high speed or turbine. Now use of high RPMs reduce the dentist's ability to conservate them and to avoid gouging of the enamel and over reduction. Now how can we measure the thickness of the enamel reduced? So these leaf gauges are usually they are possible to readily measure the amount of tooth structure reduced. So it is difficult to measure the thickness in length of millimeters and the leaves allow for accurate measurements. So they are available in different thickness. That is 0.1 mm, 0.2 mm, 0.25 mm, 0.3 mm, 0.4 mm and 0.5 mm. So in third, inserting these at different sizes will give you the amount of tooth material reduced. So after proximal stripping is complete, it, the teeth is usually susceptible to caries. So this has to be managed by comprehensive fluoride program uh, following the procedure. So the next method is expansion. Okay, So it is one of the most uh, non-invasive methods of gaining space. Usually, it is undertaken in patients having constricted maxillary arch or in patients with unilateral or bilateral prospect. So expansion is of two types, that is slow and rapid expansion. And in slow expansion, usually removable appliances can be used that can incorporate coffin springs or uh, screws. Okay? And the skeletal expansion can be uh, usually done with fixed appliances, that is with RME, with quad helix solder, WR solder, and with arch wires. Okay? So giant screws in a removable uh, appliance will give you slow expansion. Okay, in fixed quad helix and W arch can be used. Third method of gaining space is extraction. Okay, so one of the frequently used methods for gaining space for orthodontic purpose by extracting one or more teeth. Okay, so extraction that is undertaken as a part of orthodontic treatment is known as therapeutic extractions. So premolars are the most frequently extracted teeth as a part of orthodontic treatment. So extraction of one premolar from each quadrant will provide enough space to relieve the crowding or proclamation okay, without hampering the functions and aesthetics. So it is not uncommon to extract the molars. Okay, If it is grossly decayed, you can extract the molars. And the lower incisors can be extracted if it is periodontally weak or any other um, problems are there. But extraction of the canines and upper incisors are usually avoided. So the answer to which tooth to extract for a particular patient should be based on the sound diagnosis. The next one is distalization. So distalization is aimed at moving the molars in a distal direction so as to gain space. So distalization of maxillary molars assumes a significant value in the treatment of mild to moderate class two cases. Okay, and which is associated with a normal mandible. Thus, in these cases. Dislizing the molars can be done and extraction can be avoided. So the ideal period for dislization is during the mixed dentition period before eruption of the second permanent molar. So dislization can be brought about by the following methods. It could be extraoral methods or intraoral methods. Now coming to the extraoral methods, 
Here, the headgears are usually used, and headgears they derive anchorage from the cervical or the cranial region and can be used to dislocate the molars. So, this headgear it consists of a face bow, which is made up of an outer bow and an inner bow. The outer bow is attached to the extraoral head cap or the neck strap, and the inner bow is fixed to the buccal tubes present on the molars. So, what are the disadvantages of using headgears? So, patient cooperation is very essential. For the timely wear of the appliance, and if the appliances are not worn continuously, and it's intermittent action resulting in prolonged treatment time. So this is the picture of a cervical headgear, and the next is second picture shows the combination of the headgear. What are the intraoral methods to overcome the drawbacks of the extraoral appliances? Various intraoral appliances were introduced. That is a sagittal appliance, which consists of a uh, split acrylic plate, which is joined by a jack screw. This acrylic plate is sectioned in such a way that the tube to be displaced is isolated, while the rest of the arch is used for purpose of anchorage. So jack screws are positioned that their long axes are parallel to the occlusal plane as well as the buccal surface of the molars. So this is a picture of a um, jack screw, which is used to dis uh, displace the Pre-molars. Next is dislocation using intraoral magnets. So intraoral repelling magnets can be used to dislocate the molars. So the magnets are placed on the molars to be dislocated, and the tube anterior to it. So the anterior anchorage is reinforced by using a Nance folding arch. Next is appliance is a pendulum appliance. This is an intraoral dislocation appliance that incorporates a modified Nance button for the purpose of anchorage. It consists of a stainless steel wire with a helix, and the distal end of which is inserted into the sleeve on the palatal surface of the molars to be dislocated. So, dislocation is brought about by opening the helix and forcefully engaging the distal ends into the sleeves. So, this is a picture of a, a pendulum appliance. The first picture shows the uh, uh, inactive state, and the second picture shows the um, wires which, is, which are placed into the sleeve. Okay, on the lingual surface of the band and the tube to be dislocated. So these are the modifications of the pendulum appliance. That is the Hilgers Bendix, Hilgers PhD appliances, and the T-Rex appliance. Next is the a Jones jig for dislocation of the molars. Okay, you can see this uh, first picture prior to the dislocation, and the second one is after dislocation. Then repelling magnets. This is the picture of the repelling magnets used for dislocation. This is the distal jet. That is a tube embedded in the modified acrylic palatal nance button. Next is the palate, trans palatal arch. So, by placing the rotation in one of the arms of the arch, this shows the, uh, is the diagram in the first picture. The arm is now forcefully engaged to the molar. That means distal force. 